the leader of the official opposition. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Last night uh, in Vancouver, 800 people packed a hall to talk about the biggest crisis in the Lower Mainland, housing affordability. Representatives from the opposition were there, representatives from Bernie, Burnaby City Council, representatives from Vancouver City Council. The superintendent of real estate was there. This is a complex issue, Honourable Speaker, everyone understands that, but there are solutions. And person after person who came to the microphone to talk about those solutions were appealing to all of us to find common ground so that we can get to a place where affordability is not the number one issue in the housing market in Vancouver. Yet what was missing last night, Honourable Speaker, was any representation from the government, any representation from the BC Liberal Party. So my question, Honourable Speaker, through you to the Minister of Housing is this. Will he stop burying his head in the sand? Will he stop ignoring the crisis that's afflicting the people in the Lower Mainland? And will he take some action today to alleviate housing affordability challenges in the Lower Mainland? Minister for Housing. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And if the member knows that we made some changes to the property transfer tax and the budget we just did, that actually brings afford trying to drive down some affordability on the taxation piece of housing. He also knows this is a pretty broad subject and requires a lot of work. And the, record, the work is in various areas, Madam Speaker. First of all, we'd like to have more rental housing in the marketplace. For 10 years, the ministers of housing across the country have gone to Fed continuously gone to federal government and said, would you bring in some tax incentives to encourage rental housing being built across Canada, not just in Vancouver or British Columbia. I've often welcomed in my estimates debate the members opposite to also write to the federal government and we'll continue to do that going into June when we have a, a national meeting of, of housing ministers with the federal minister in June. In addition to that, there's all kinds of issues that actually affect affordability and housing, and they all need to come out to be dealt with. And by the way, I welcome the meeting you had last night. Unfortunately, we were actually tied up last night, but we did have people there observing and taking notes. Hey, you guys know how this place works. You know when meetings take place, and you know when caucuses meet, and if you don't like the fact that we have to do other things as well, then, and you want to bring that into the public for, then the next time you have a caucus meeting, tell people you can't be somewhere. You have other responsibilities sometimes in this house. That's why we send people to listen take notes and bring back the information. But what I didn't see last night, Madam Speaker, was the real issues that have faced the affordability in housing. First of all, in the city of Vancouver, they need to learn about density. They need to learn about density. They need to learn about density. Members. They need to, they need to learn about increased density, Madam Speaker. They only have to look to Burnaby. They only have to look to Burnaby. Actually, Vancouver West End. The chair will hear the question. We'll get to that in a minute, Madam Speaker. There's density, there's community charges that are put on buildings and construction. The time it takes to get a building permit, development permit, all of that work is just cost and money that actually goes to the consumer in housing. So we have to work together to make sure that piece of affordability comes. In addition to it, Madam Speaker, we can look at how we densify, how we can add things that are mortgage helpers to housing like they've done in Surrey with regards to coach houses and basement suites, and how you can get affordability in rentals by actually using the density of the market to do it. And as we come through that, Madam Speaker, we're going to continue to deal with the other issues in and around shadow flipping and those things that are already in, already in process to get done, Madam Speaker, and we'll continue to do that. Special opposition on a supplemental. Well, thank you, Honourable Speaker. Perhaps it's better that the minister wasn't there last night because people weren't looking for excuses, they were looking for accountability. Yay. Perhaps it's better that the minister wasn't there last night because people were looking for cooperation, not pointing the finger at the federal government for inaction and blaming communities for not being able to address the challenges that they're facing every single day. The minister has been in charge of this file for 15 years. 15 years.
And the result of that 15, the result of that 15 years of work is applause from the train seals who didn't have the jam to show up and be accountable last night. crisis in housing in the Lower Mainland. This morning, I propose two modest solutions. Leader. Please continue. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. This morning, I propose two modest solutions. One that would put the burden on absentee owners to pay a little bit more so the people who want to live and work in Vancouver can afford to do so. My question through you, Honourable Speaker, to the Minister of Housing, after 15 years of ignoring the problem in Vancouver and the Lower Mainland, will he take a modest step today and join with me and support taxing those who are using Vancouver as a safety deposit box, not a place to live and grow and raise your family? Mr. Housing. Well, thanks, uh, Madam Speaker, and through to the member opposite. First of all, uh, nobody blaming anybody, but there are levels of government and opportunities to try and drive affordability, and they do include not just us, but other levels of government and communities involved. And if you don't want to tell the people that you're 800-person meeting that la last night, Members. that's entirely up to you. You want to talk about accountability? Last night you were giving out cards so people could write me. I welcome that because I'd like to write them back and tell them a few things. The first thing I want to tell them, <laughs> first thing I want to tell them is this: that there are 30,000 households and families in British Columbia that every month get a check from the province of British Columbia to the affordability of their rent in the marketplace. <laughs> and then I want to have them ask the opposition this question. What are you going to do when the, the NDP, should they ever become government, cancel the rent assistance program that they don't support, and those 30,000 people are out on the streets of British Columbia without that subsidy every month because you want to take away their affordability? I'll take this moment to remind all members the chair will hear the questions and the answers. Vancouver Point Grey. Honourable Speaker, when the Royal Bank of Canada called Metro Vancouver's housing market dangerous and astounding, our finance minister responded by describing the housing market as follows, quote, it's unusual. There are implications for people looking to get into the housing market. Well, he doesn't have to tell Jennifer Lloyd that there are implications. Yesterday, yesterday at our town hall, Jennifer told the story of her family. She and her husband, both PhDs, working full-time, the biggest home they can afford, is so cramped that a child is sleeping in the master bathroom. She says she wants the government to tackle the issue of international money and speculative money in our housing market, driving prices out of reach of families that actually live and work in the Lower Mainland. Will the housing minister support a tax on this money in our housing market so families like Jennifer's get a fair shot? Minister for Housing. Well, thanks, Madam Speaker, and, and I know the frustration for people, particularly in certain areas of Vancouver, on affordability, and I can, I can understand the frustration because when I moved to the Lower Mainland in 1984, I couldn't afford to buy in Vancouver, and not everybody can. And that's not to blame on anything, but there's a micro market there, particularly in one area of Vancouver where there's, 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 there's housing that is, that is attractive to investors and people that live there long term. I do actually believe we need to collect the data, so we've made that move already to collect the data on, on who's buying, where they're from, whether they're a landed immigrant or they're a citizen of the country, and if not, what country they're from and where they're coming from. We're going to collect that data so we can actually do the work that some of the members office would like us to do with regards to identifying these opportunities to find solutions in the housing market. We're going to continue to do that because rather than just say everybody's coming from another country to buy the house, I thought maybe we might want to find out the data for sure. Now, the Minister of Finance has done that. That work is going on. That will be put in place on all new purchases of homes in British Columbia so that information can be collected. We will then track that. We will also look at the issues in and around aspects of when a house is sold and in what period of time it's sold at. And I really think the members opposite should thank the member from Oak Bay Gordon Head because your two private member bills are basically what he had done already. Right. 
Thank you for Point Gray on a supplemental. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. You know, I. Members, this House will come to order. Please continue. I do, I do thank the member for uh, Oak Bay Gordon Head because it shows the unanimity of everyone except for this government. <laughs> Something needs to be done. Why does everyone except this minister get that something needs to be done? Now, members, ministers. Now, I want to I want to tell the minister about another member, who, uh, another person who lives in this micro area called the Lower Mainland. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Fung, he's a successful software engineer. His family earns well above the median income in Vancouver. They live in a condo so small that he and his wife can't watch TV without waking up their youngest daughter. They watch Netflix on their phones instead. Now, Justin. <laughs> Justin, is, Justin is a member of the new economy. Members. Justin is a member of the new economy in the Lower Mainland. He can work anywhere in the world, but he chooses to stay in Vancouver for now. He has a very straightforward request for this government. Tax the international and speculative money in our housing market so he and his family can actually stay in the city they want to live in and help build this economy. Now, now, one more time to the minister. Will he tax the speculative money in our housing market so Justin and his family and the tech workers who are building the economy of the future get to stay in the Lower Mainland and help build our provincial economy? Minister for Housing. Well, thanks, Madam Speaker. And through the member opposite, uh, all of that work is actually being done. The finance minister has already told this House that that's being done. The Ministry of Finance is looking at all of those opportunities with regards to housing, with regards to issues where taxes could be avoided, that is the issue that, that was contained in some of the comments earlier, as well as the other stuff. So that's all being done. And we'll continue to do that, but at the same time, we're going to sit down with municipalities and we're going to talk about how we can improve the accountability relative to the cost and time it takes to build a home. The estimate is on the lower mainland of British Columbia, that cost is between $100,000 and $200,000 per house on the lower mainland has charges and taxes and community amenity charges on it before a shovel actually goes in the ground. Then you add in the time. So some cities take at least five years for you to go through zoning and time, so that time is money that goes to the consumer, it's density that doesn't get done, housing that doesn't get built. You need to actually have the people at the table. It's not just about pointing fingers. But I would say to the member opposite one thing. I'd say, say one thing to the member opposite. I, I welcome the fact you're giving out cards to actually write or call me as a minister responsible for housing British Company. I look forward to that. But the one thing I didn't see you giving out, and I think you should have, readily available through BC Housing or brochures to tell people who don't have the income to try and pursue an opportunity in ownership. We could give them out a brochure on rent assistance so they could actually apply and get a check every month to help them with the rent to live in the city of Vancouver. 